In 2016, the year our RV was built, the manufacturer installed a non-towing hitch receiver. It was designed to attach items such as bicycle racks and cargo carriers up to 300 pounds, but not intended for towing. While many states, including my state of Michigan, allows double towing with RVs, and then in 2017, the manufacturer began installing a towing rated hitch receiver, so I decided to finally upgrade my RV so that I could potentially double tow. The reason the existing receiver hitch cannot be used for double towing is the weak attachment method used to attach the hitch to the frame. Essentially it is tack welded. Some RV owners having this hitch have had a welding shop beef up this area, but that still does not guarantee how much the hitch can tow. I ended up purchasing a Curt 13703 RV hitch that has a 3500 towing capacity and a 350 pound tongue capacity. It is a bolt-on hitch and will work with up to a 71 inch wide RV frame and pretty sure is more capacity than I'll ever need because I plan on towing a lightweight trailer with a canoe or a kayak maybe four or five hundred pounds at the maximum. We can compare the two hitch receivers. The one in the foreground is the old one. This one is the new one. The old one weighs about 72 pounds. The new one is about 50. So in reality it's kind of disheartening that the manufacturer put in really a heavier duty receiver. But if you look at the side, they cheapened out here on the cross piece. And that's the weak link, and that's why you cannot tow with it. And this is one of the side brackets to the new hitch. And it's much more beefy. It's maybe at least a quarter inch thick steel. And these weigh about 15 pounds a piece. So 30 pounds on top of 50, we're at about 80 pounds. And another 10, 12 pounds of hardware. You know, we're maybe 90 pounds now on the new hitch versus about 74 or 75 on the old hitch. However, I would have to beef up the old one and by doing so it would certainly be as heavy as this one. And unfortunately I'm in a stopping point on this project. After I pulled the bottom it started raining and rain is forecast for the next eight days if you can believe that. It's really crazy. I have this ribbon away, so I have to relocate one of the holes in the mounting plate. I also have to drill a hole for the feed through of the wiring. So I got to modify the mounting plates slightly. And we're just estimating where we got to drill holes. We have to locate the hole here because the frame member comes down to here. And then we got to notch that. And you can see here the hole I had to drill to clear the frame and also to clear the wiring. Yeah. 
After drilling the first hole in the frame and temporarily attaching the bracket, I used a 9 16 inch drill bit for each of the other holes, which simply marked the hole location in the frame. That way, when I remove the bracket, I will have my own self-center tapped holes. After assembling this on the RV and doing a test fit, I marked the holes that have to be drilled from the top down, yet I can't drill the holes in that manner with the hitch on the RV. So yeah, I have to take it off again. One of the tasks I have with this project is to wire up the existing taillights to a connector so that I can extend that to the next trailer. And I've already prepared the trailer with LED lighting and the reason I did that is because LEDs take much less current than incandescent lighting does and that will prevent the need to rewire the RV with a heavy duty wire. So by all means use LEDs if you can. And I have two packages. This is a Hopkins connector kit and this is a Reese mounting bracket. And the mounting bracket just comes with an upper and a lower and a couple screws and a couple of long cable ties and no drilling is needed. The wiring harness comes with the vehicle end and a loom already attached and then just uh, bare ends for the other end so we can splice this into the existing trailer harness. We take one of the shell halves and seat the connector and then this side just snaps on like that. And then we have a couple screws that we can put in and if it is loose at all there is a allen screw that we can use to tighten up against the trailer connector but I don't think that's going to be necessary and then the way this works is you see how there's a notch here this goes onto the hitch receiver and then these two cable ties feed through here and wrap around the hitch receiver cross member or you can put screws in if you desire when I first started using these heat shrink connectors I wasn't really getting very good results so it does take some finessing to get them to work. And basically they are adhesive heat shrink with a little solder bulb in there. So all you have to do is twist the wires together, put them in here, and put a heat gun on here and it will melt the solder and also waterproof the uh, splice. So these actually work pretty good in this environment. When you wire the connector, one thing you must be aware of is that your RV lights are likely wired using the RVIA and FPA 1192 standard while the typical trailer uses the SAE 1239 or SAE 2863 standard. Unfortunately the color code is different between the two standards so if you match brown to brown, green to green and so forth 
You will miswire the trailer connector and the attached trailer lights will not work properly. My video all about 7-pin RV wiring is essential for you understanding the pitfalls you might encounter. I will post a link to that video here. I understand the differences, but I had to make this drawing so that I could keep the wiring colors straight in my mind. Essentially, the brown and green wires are swapped between the two standards, and the yellow wire replaces the red wire, or vice versa, depending on which standard you're referencing. Well, laying on the ground under the trailer, it's pretty difficult to take video of this while I'm doing it. I spliced the left turn here, and you'll see it goes from red to yellow. And then down there, I spliced in the taillight and the right turn, and they go from brown to green and green to brown, respectively. This is coroplast, which is a common name for a corrugated plastic. And now we have the coroplast screwed back into the other side. So we're all done here. Now it's just a matter of sealing it with some sealer. This is called uh, Great Stuff Multi-Purpose Black. And it's typically the black foam stuff you see on the bottom of your trailer. So the only downside to using this is once you use it, you've got to use it all or it's no good. So you're going to waste probably half a can. When you're double towing, Michigan law requires safety chains at the rear trailer to be attached to the frame rather than the traditional position at the hitch. So I bought these 3,000 pound lifting eyes and I'm going to install these on the frame. Visit rv-project.com